So, let us begin with the question that we uh, addressed last time. Suppose, I have a, an ideal let A be a ring I be an ideal of A and uh, M be an A mod. When can we say A mod I is M an A mod I module? Can we think of M as an A mod I module in a natural way? That is, how do you expect uh, the natural way? This is, see this is an abelian group. Basically, we need to define a scalar multiplication, right. So, how do you define scalar multiplication here? x bar m, yeah, this is the natural way of defining this. But then, if I take two representatives of x bar, then they may not be equal. So, what is the condition that is required? So, what I want is if I take any two representatives, okay, that should imply that x m is y m for any m in m or for all m in m, right then only this definition will make sense. But what does this mean? Does this mean x equal to y? So, this would imply that x minus y times m is 0 for all m belongs to m. Or in other words, x minus y should be in the annihilator of m. See here we have started with x bar equal to y bar and we have, conclu and we have concluded that for this to be a uh, m to be naturally an a mod i module, we need x minus y to be in the annihilator of m. This, this says that x minus y belongs to i and what indeed we want is x minus y should be in the annihilator. So, what condition would you like to impose? See, this is the condition that we started with, right? x minus y belongs to i, which is same as saying x bar equal to y bar. And then we said that, okay, from here, I want this property. So, ultimately, we, get, we got x minus y belongs to an heliotrophic. Or in other words, what we want is, i is contained in an heliotrophic. So, therefore, the observation that we have made here is if i is contained in the annihilator of m, then m is an a mod i module. As I said earlier, see if you look for example, if you take z and uh, z let us say uh, z 5, okay. we cannot really say that z is a z 5 module. I mean, oh, so, start with z and z. So, z is a z module, but z 
is not a Z mod phi Z module. Naturally, you can of course define all scalar multiplication to be zero. That will define a null structure on the module, but the natural definition is this. With this, we do not have a, a module structure on z over z mod phi z. So, you have a module m over a ring a does not mean that you can uh, have a module structure on m over a mod i. For that, what we have found is i should be contained in the annihilator, then only it is possible. So, now let us look at uh, uh, some more properties of modules. So, a set of uh, elements x lambda lambda belong to uh, in m is said to be a generating set or set of generators for m if when would you say a set is a generating set? Uh, so, think of the vector space uh, you must have gone through like to start with every element can be expressed as a finite linear combination of elements coming from here or in other words if uh, m is equal to summation a lambda x lambda I will just write finite here a lambda uh, belongs to a lambda belongs to lambda. Okay. So, maybe I will uh, write this call the set s x lambda in s and uh, if s is finite then m is said to be finitely generated. So, now, you know taking uh, ideas from the linear algebra course that you have gone through, one may you know tend to talk about linear independence and uh, you know basis and so on. Okay. So, one of the linear independence of course, you can define the same way like this a uh, finite linear combination is 0 if and only if all the coefficients are 0. Okay. A set is said to be linearly independent if you take any finite linear combination non 0 finite linear combination cannot be 0. Okay. So, uh, in this case one can define to be the same. Now, the question is the first question is can we have a generating set which is linearly independent. You start with any generating set can we reduce it to a linearly independent uh, I mean maximal linearly independent set which is a span of whose span is the whole module and so on. So, the module theory is not uh, you know as fortunate as uh, the vector space theory. Uh, for example, if you take z, take one of the you know 
uh, nicest example z over z okay so if you take the module z over z itself can you give me generating set 1 right this is a generating set and this is linearly independent right alpha times 1 is 0 if and only if alpha is 0 ok. But now in vector space theory we have much more it is you take any generating set from that you can throw out if needed few vectors and get a generating set which is linearly independent. Okay. In this case suppose you take the generating set 2, 3. This is certainly a generating set, right. Now, is this linearly independent? Minus 3 times 2 plus 2 times 3 is 0. Th therefore, this is not linearly independent. But can you throw away one of them? Still generate whole z? No. So, therefore, this is a generating set. In fact, this is a minimal generating set. which is not linearly independent. So, unlike in the case of vector spaces, here minimal generating set need not be linearly independent and similarly a maximal linearly independent set need not be a generating set for example, 2. If you take simply 2 that is a maximal linearly independent set. In fact, you take any integer single integer that is going to be a maximal linearly independent set, but that is not a basis unless that integer is 1 or minus 1. Okay. So, therefore, the theory of modules is you know slightly more general and it is uh, it does not behave as nice as in the case of uh, vector spaces over fields. So, let us look at one or two uh, more examples of generating set. Suppose, I take look at the ideal i in. So, your ring a is let us say uh, uh, let us take k x k a field and i to be all polynomials with constant term 0. Is this an ideal? This is certainly a module over A, right. Can you tell me what a generating set for this? What is a generating set for this? X, X right. So, ideal i is generated by X. I will write usually either this or another notation is uh, you know, both the notations will be used. Can you think of a module which is infinitely generated? Think of vector space theory. If you borrow the you know, example from vector space theory, you can always you know cook up a uh, infinite dimensional vector space over a field. Here itself if you take A to B A to B well yeah A to B C A B 
this is what you mean and then what is m then well that will require some m cannot be c dash can it be c dash will it be a modulo but how do you uh, i guess you are thinking too complex let's uh, let me just then uh, i take a to be k and m to be k x it's a infinite dimensional vector space over k right that's a natural uh, infinite dimensional uh, infinitely generated module over k and if you take a to be r and m to be c a b again example coming from the vector space theory suppose i take a to be so here you know we will see some you know subrings of kx kxy and so on so if i take a to be k m to be okay so let me take the uh, a to be not k uh x square x y x y square x y cube and so on okay so this is a ring and if i take i to be the ideal this ideal x square x y x y square x y cube and so on. can you see that this is infinitely generated can you get this from here how do you get this from here the only possibility is to multiply by y but in the ring it is not there y is not there in the ring okay so none of them can be i mean no pure power of y is there in the ring so none of these can be obtained from previous any of the guys so therefore this is this is infinitely generated a module okay so suppose i have a uh, see in the case of rings in the case of vector spaces in the case of groups you have uh, studied uh, you know if you have a collection of vector spaces v1 v2 and so on of vector spaces over a field f then you can form its product right cartesian product uh, have you seen direct product yes, sir. direct sum direct product there is a difference between these two uh, so suppose i have a collection of a modules be a collection of a modules okay then we can form what is called direct sum of m alpha uh, m lambda lambda belong to lambda this is set of all sequences x alpha uh, i mean x lambda lambda in lambda 
such that x lambda is 0 for all but finitely many. This is all tuples where it is the 0 after a finite stage. Okay. And I can form the product, ah, okay. so this is x lambda in m lambda and x lambda is 0 for all but uh, finitely many lambdas product m lambda, lambda and lambda, this is defined as x lambda sequence with no restriction, that is the only. So, if lambda is finite, then yeah then the direct sum m lambda is same as the product m lambda and otherwise they are not the same right there would be a uh, i mean if your modules are non zero modules and uh, the indexing set is infinite then they are not the same product and direct sum they are not the same and uh, because in, in this one there would be an infinite non-zero sequence while uh, here there are none like that. A module m is said to be free If so, this is somewhat similar to the case of vector spaces. We do not really have, yeah, again, as I said, see in the vector space theory, once you say it is a vector space over a module uh, over a field F, there is a unique either infinity or a unique integer assigned to it right which which is the cardinality of minimal generating set or a maximal linearly independent set okay but in the case of modules we have already seen that there is nothing like that in general there is no uh, you know dimension in some sense but in for a certain subclass of modules, one can, one has this. This class of modules are called free modules. So, what is free module? We define free module to be the way exactly that you know a vector space looks like in the case of uh, uh, linear algebra, in the case of uh, vector spaces over fields. Any, if you take any finite dimensional vector space or you, you take any vector space, it is a direct sum of field, right. If you take any vector space V, if it is over, over a field F, if it is finite dimensional, then we know that this is isomorphic to F n, where n is the dimension of V and this is true in general as well. It is a direct sum of, if you take any <coughs> infinite dimensional vector space also, it is it's a product of f. So, here we will define a module to be free module if it is exactly of this form or in other words, if m is equal to direct sum m lambda. Uh, with m lambda isomorphic to A for all uh, 
each m lambda is isomorphic to A. Or in other words, we can we can say that m is isomorphic to so this is the notation for you know direct sum of as many copies of a as the cardinality of lambda okay this is a notation So, for example, I have if I take m to be m direct sum m uh, sorry a direct sum a. So, this is we usually denote this by ok and uh, a direct sum a n times. is denoted by a power n. If the lambda is finite, then we denote it like this instead of this. So, just to take examples from uh, ok sorry I forgot to mention one thing. See uh, again this is something that you have already seen in, in the case of rings and mod uh, uh, vector spaces and groups and so on. This is again an A module. Remark direct sum m lambda and the product m lambda is an A module or A modules. So, when you say they are A modules, you need to specify what should be the operations the addition and the scalar multiplication component wise right with component wise addition and scalar multiplication Suppose you have a uh, ok. So, let us look at one or two examples. Okay. Can you give me an example? So, a module over z which is not free, give me an example. Yeah? Uh, P z is this uh, why is this not free is this free or not free as a module over so this is a this is m is m a free a module How do you check whether m is a free a module or not? The question is so here we are saying it is a direct sum of like this with each m isomorphic to m lambda isomorphic to a. So, here it is kind of obvious that it has to be isomorphic to z if at all. So, how do you check whether it is isomorphic to z or not? you have to define a map right you have to define a homomorphism a map which is a homomorphism injective and surjective if you are able to do this then it's a it's an isomorphism they are isomorphic now looking at this can you think of a map to start with from z to here or from here to z so from z to P z n going to P n. Is this an A module homomorphism? N 1 plus n 2 is mapped to P n 1 plus P n 2. Similarly, 
p I mean m n is mapped to p times m n which is m times p n which is m times phi if I call this to be phi. So, then phi is is this injective? It is injective right. This is an integral domain and you are doing a multiplication map that can never be 0 non zero image element cannot be taken to zero element. So, therefore, this is injective this is, a, uh, is it surjective? Yes, sir. yes. So, this is an isomorphism. So, therefore, what does that say? Um, what did we start with? We wanted to check whether m is free or not. So, what does it say? m is a free z module. Right? <coughs> so, what can you, uh, I mean can you more generally say, can you generalize this statement? That is, yeah, if you take any n that is going to be a free z module. Every ideal is a free z module. Okay. Can you say this more generally? Suppose you instead of z, can you replace z by some special kind of ring and any integral domain? If you take any principal ideal domain and take any ideal in the principal ideal domain, that will be a free A module. So, A is a PID and M is an ideal in A, then M is isomorphic to A as A modules. So, that implies M is free. Okay. So, let me uh, give you an exercise to think about. Uh, take A equal to F x y. find some free modules over A. Well, uh, do not give me examples like A direction by A direction by A direction by you know that is by definition they are free modules. What I am asking for some you know uh, ideals of A or you know some uh, uh, modules over A which are you know, free. Think about it. Now, give me some examples which are not free. Z x this is so your A is z and m is z x. Is this free, not free? It is not finite, that is ok. Is this, uh, so can we see there are, there is one way that to say it is not free you have to say that m cannot be isomorphic to something of this form right yeah so in this case this is isomorphic to Right? 
See, every element is a finite tuple in some sense. Right. So, one can you know define this map a naught plus a 1 plus etcetera up to a n uh, a naught plous a 1 x plus etcetera a n x power n is mapped to a naught comma a 1 comma a n and then 0 everywhere else. That will be a uh, module isomorphism between these two modules. So, again this is z x is a free a module z module. Okay, so, let me ask you how about is z 5 so let us start with z 2 a free a module. Can we say Z2 to be a free A module? Z2, if I have any map from an infinite set to a finite set, it cannot be injective. As simple as that. So, any homomorphism from you know some direct sum of that form, direct sum. Uh, some lambda of z, this any map to z 2 is not injective, this is pure set theory, there is homomorphism or not any map from uh, you know direct sum like this to z 2 cannot be injective because of properties of finite sets, basic properties of finite sets. So, therefore, this is z 2 is not a free module. So, can you make a general statement? Any finite abelian group is not. I mean, so, if you take z uh, n i i from 1 to r let us say is they are all see the any abelian group is in z module. So, they are all z modules, but this is is not a free z module. Now, what if I take infinitely many of them. Up to here we did not need uh, you know any group theory, we only needed the definition of free modules and <laughs> to say that I mean a basic set theory from an infinite set you cannot give a injective map to a finite set. But what if I take direct sum z n i i from 1 to infinity n i in z need not necessarily ok. Well, yeah. So, z n may be l. Uh, so, usual yeah with the usual notation yes we will expect it to be natural numbers. I can even exclude 0 and 1 because So, there, therefore, this is is this a free z module ok. Think about this why it cannot be uh, well ok. So, let me reveal the answer it cannot be a free z module. Now, think about why this cannot be a so the question is the whether we have a an isomorphism like this okay
there is an isomorphism. Does there exist an isomorphism? Yes. And each component is finite. Yes. So how it can be a surjective and injective at the same time? Yeah, that's exactly you have to prove. Right? See earlier arguments earlier arguments say that you cannot have a injective map from here to here because of properties of finite sets. But you have here it's this is an infinite set. Why we cannot have again z is infinite. That is ok. That does not follow from the basic set theory. Right. See for example, if you take natural number uh, take n from n to 1 is there a is there an injective map no n to 2 no now this is my mi this is mi but from n to union mi i from 1 to infinity there is an 1 1 on 2 map right so, we cannot really say, but the idea is there from what you said, each z and i is a finite z module. Okay. That z and i sits inside here, right? Uh, it is a you can think of it as a sub module of this module. Yeah, so I will probably leave it at that point, you know, you should now be able to complete it. Okay, so what are these, you know, uh, we will just uh, explore more properties of uh, modules and then come back to this question later maybe. I mean this is, uh, I mean it does not need any more theory, it is straightforward from here. Okay, so uh, suppose I have a finitely generated m be a finitely generated a module okay so let x1 up to xn be a generating set In the case of vector spaces, if I have a generating set, then we have, so the same in fact in the case of vector spaces there is one result that we uh, proved during the uh, linear algebra course that if you take a basis of a vector, spa vector space V and you take that many number of vectors from w another vector space w then there exists a unique linear map from v to w which maps each of these vi's to corresponding wi's we did not really use you know any specific properties uh, of vector spaces there except for the case of uniqueness okay so, in this in the case of modules also one can prove that there exists a linear map, there exists a homomorphism from m to n taking a generating set and corresponding set of elements. Uh, we will not need that for the time being, but then how did we prove you know the same method uh, to say that you know V has dimension n n is uniquely determined where v is isomorphic to f n we defined a map from so if v is a vector space 
power f, then we define the map from fn to v by a1 up to an going to a1 v1 plus etc a n v n right where this is a basis of f basis of v and one showed that this is a this is a homomorphism I mean it is a linear map 1 1 on 2 and so on. So, in the case of modules suppose I have a generating set can you think of something similar will it be 1 1 on 2 and so on we will take it up in the next class.